right before we started recording this, we just had some some big news that hit. And there was a terror attack at uh, just outside the Kabul airport in Afghanistan. Now, to this point, the United States, uh, since August 14th, has evacuated at least 75,000 people. So as of today, it's actually close to 100,000. 100,000. That's from August 14th, or I think that's from the end of July. Okay. Well, yeah. as of this morning, it was, I think, 90,000 to 95,000. Okay. Yeah. So in all seriousness, and... Um, the White House press secretary said this, Jen Psaki said this the other day, this is like the largest airlift in U.S. history. Yeah. And again, had gotten out nearly 100,000 people, if not more than 100,000 people, definitely over 100,000 since late July. Um, and Biden came out and gave a speech the other day and said, we have, there, there's a credible threat of an ISIS terror attack. And that was one of the reasons why he cited you know what, the the August 31st deadline, we're going to stick to that August 31st deadline. Right. And the Taliban also came out and said, you're sticking to the August 31st deadline. Now, everybody interpreted the Taliban saying that as like, oh, they're trying to show that they're like macho and tough. But, you know, seeing that now there was an attack, I actually look at that and I think maybe they believe that too because they thought they couldn't secure the airport. And so you had 6,000 U.S. Uh, military on the ground trying to secure the airport to get the evacuations done. Um, and you had the Taliban, too, tan tangentially there. Um, and there was two bombs that just went off. And as of right now, and this is almost certainly going to change because this is very early on uh, for when this happened. I mean, this just happened an hour or two ago. Uh, there's 13 who are dead, 15 who are injured, including three Americans. So it's a developing story. But um, the ISIS has already come out, and um, and we just saw this literally five minutes ago. We were going to come out here, and I was going to speculate that it's ISIS who did the bombing. Now we know for sure because they've announced that they were responsible for it. So we're in a very weird situation where the Taliban is a guerrilla army, and they have national ambitions. They want Afghanistan. They've effectively taken Afghanistan. And what you have are jihadist elements, ISIS, al-Qaeda, and others— and so now you have this basically um, theocratic civil war, in essence, happening within the country. And, you know, this is one of the things you won't hear on mainstream media. In fact, now they're saying the opposite, but I'll go out and say it. There is a 0% chance that the Taliban wanted this to happen because they're going to view this as one of the few things that could potentially draw the Americans back in, which is the last thing that they want. The absolute last thing that they want here. Um, there are also reports, by the way, that Taliban militants were also injured or killed in this attack. That's right. And yeah. again, when we're recording this, it's preliminary information coming in. So by the time that this airs, there may be different facts and different information that is out there. But we're just giving you what we know at this point. Yeah, look, I mean, already over on CNN, H.R. McMaster is there speculating that, oh, maybe the Taliban put ISIS up to that. I mean, you he, he's, he's not lying. stupid no, enough. He's lying. He's lying. He is not he's lying. stupid That's enough to think that that would be the case because they're enemies. They're not buddies. They're not friends. They are enemies. They are adversaries, number one. And number two, as you said, Taliban wants us out of there. That's why they've allowed us to, you know, have the airport and get all of these flights and get our people and some Afghans out as well. Tens and tens of thousands of people. They want us gone so that they can take control and, you know, best of luck to them governing and do all of the terrible thing. No one here is saying like the Taliban is good or anything like that. I mean, they're terrible and their ideology is terrible and they're repressive. All of that is the case. It is also, in fact, the case that there are some even more extremist elements that have not just national ambitions, but global terror ambitions. ISIS-K, that's the sort of regional ISIS affiliate, is one of them. And that looks to be who is responsible for these attacks. So six years ago, almost to the day, I recorded a segment titled the Taliban is clobbering ISIS in Afghanistan because the reporting was at the time ISIS and at the time they had developed what they considered a caliphate and Afghanistan they're the you know they're an Islamist um, regional government in many respects and they didn't like that there was a new kid on the block who was encroaching on their territory and so there was a war between the Taliban and ISIS in fact the United States backed the Taliban in that fight that's on the record we know that that's the case. And so point is, they've always been enemies or for, you know, all of recent history, they've been enemies. And so we're in a position now where 
the Taliban has taken over, and they certainly feel like this is something that's going to make them look bad on the world stage. Because they're doing the whole PR offensive, remember? Right. Where they're pretending, like, well, we're in favor of women's rights and free right. speech. Yeah, okay, sure you are. <laughs> but what they're trying to do, guys, the reason why they're doing that is because they want to be accepted as a legitimate government. And so when you have what just happened, and now some people are blaming the Taliban for it, acting like they carry out the attack— well, my suspicion is, hear me now, quote me later, this is speculation, but we'll see whether or not it comes true. My guess is the Taliban are going to unleash the hounds of hell on ISIS now. And so you really are going to have, uh, you know, bloody, bloody fight that could continue for an extended period of time, which gets back to the main point. Get the hell out. ASAP. Now, right. I, I, you know, I say that we are doing that, at least to this point, we've been doing that. Hopefully this doesn't drag them right back in because Biden might fall for that. We don't know. But... The takeaway from this is get out, get out, get out, get out. You want to referee a fight between ISIS and the Taliban? Are you insane? This right. reminds me like when people have been saying, oh, this is just like, you know, the, the fall of Saigon. That's what this reminds me of. They say that. And the implication is like the, the lesson was we should have stayed in Vietnam longer. Right. No, the message was we shouldn't have even done this war in the first place. And now people are citing that. And implying like, oh, see, we messed up Afghanistan so bad, as if the implication is we should have just stayed there. There was no there was no going back to the status quo because, you know, there was the the agreement that they had with the Taliban. And then, you know, the what's the phrase you guys used on breaking points? The guns would have been hot on whatever the day was that the uh, the agreement runs out. Mm -hmm. And so you couldn't there would have been fighting immediately if we didn't follow through. Originally, it was May 1st, then it was pushed to August 31st. But you can't just stay there after you've crafted the agreement. And if you, you know, if the U.S. did another surge, the results of that would have been absolutely disastrous. More well, Americans would have died. More money would have been spent. And yeah. you would be in whenever you do eventually pull out. The same thing would have happened. Taliban, the Taliban would have taken over Afghanistan and it would have become Talibanistan. I love the way that the Hawks use literally every obvious glaring failure of their own policy to somehow justify more of their policy. That's right. right? That's I exactly mean, right. What we've learned over the past couple of weeks is that the Afghanistan war was even more of a failure than the greatest critics could have possibly imagined. Whole thing totally collapses. We spent 20 years to make the Taliban stronger and the opposition, which we, you know, funded and tried to arm and tried to train and all of that stuff. We actually made the opposition weaker than when we initially showed up in Afghanistan. So that failure greater than anyone could have possibly imagined. And yet somehow the Hawks use that to justify, oh, no, well, that just means we need to stay longer. And now, to your point, this attack just actually vindicates Biden saying, guys, no, we need to get the hell out of there by August 31st because this is a dangerous situation. And the longer that we stay there, the more dangerous it becomes, especially if we stay past the date that we initially set here of August 31. Then we're in the middle of a civil war. It's a live fire exercise and anything can ultimately happen. American uh, officials, British officials, UK officials and Australian officials had all warned their people not to go to the airport right now because of what they were describing as a very specific terror threat. Biden announced it in a speech. Announced it in a speech. He said there's going to be an attack. So I, this is going to hit. They, they had this intelligence that this was very unfortunately likely to happen. Um, and so they were warning people away. And look, this is such a volatile situation that even with the U.S. troops that are there on the ground, servicemen and women who are doing an incredible job of manu managing this evacuation in incredibly difficult circumstances. In spite of that, in spite of the Taliban, for all that we can tell, somewhat cooperating here, you still have what turns out to be a horrific terror attack. As you said, it is it just further proves that it is time to get the hell out of there before there's even more loss of life. Well, I would just propose this question to people because every what's going to happen is the idiots on mainstream media are going to blame Biden again. Mm -hmm. He just warned that there was going to be an attack. He just warned that it was going to happen. And then it happened. What else, what would you have done differently if you were in Joe Biden's shoes? And if you say, hey, we should have stayed there. Well, you already lost me. You already lost the American people. The most recent poll, 63 percent, even after the fall of Kabul, 63 percent say we, we should get out. So you lose me if you say just permanently stay. So given the set of facts that we're leaving, what could he have done differently? If we already evacuated 
almost 100,000 people or over 100,000 people. And to that point, there were zero American casualties. What, what would you have done differently? I, I mean that question sincerely. What would you have done differently? Because I just saw Ben Shapiro on Twitter saying impeach. Impeach? Impeach for ending a war? Do you have no idea how the Constitution works? That's the commander in chief. He can end whatever war he likes. He can't start any war because that's on Congress. Congress has the authority to declare a war. So if anything, you should say impeach Biden for the illegal bombing of Syria or the illegal bombing of Somalia, which he engages in all the time. There, there's a fair argument to make. There is not at all a fair argument to make about pulling out of a war that we never should have been in in the first place that we just learned from the Afghanistan papers was a farce from day one. So what would you have done differently? Yeah. There, there is no answer to that. People are just going to use this to attack, and the media is now going to have a field day, the cackling hyenas that they are, and they're going to use this to drive down his poll numbers even more. Again, on the one issue where he did the right thing, they're going to clobber him over and over and over and over and drive his poll numbers down. And that's why the media is full of shit and they manufacture consent. Noam Chomsky was right all along. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And look, you know, regular people out there living their lives, they don't know these details that Taliban and ISIS are adversaries. No idea. No right? idea. So when someone People on CNN don't know that. So, right, unfortunately, that seems to be the case. So when H.R. McMaster goes on there and in his grave and solemn tone informs them that, oh, it's it's very possible that the Taliban put the ISIS up to this. Total bullshit. It, yeah. I mean, but, you know, if you don't have educated anchors or anchors who have any interest in informing people like that's ridiculous. And for you just to come on my air and make some wild accusation without having anything to back it up that seems preposterous on its face, like that's wildly irresponsible. But that's also a perfect metaphor for how their coverage has been this entire time. So, yes, it is the greatest irony that the most courageous and correct thing that Biden has done by far in his administration, he gets trashed across the board from liberal media, from conservative media, from morons like Ben Shapiro who want to say impeach over actually doing the thing, having the courage to do the thing that two presidents before him promised to do and never actually were able to pull off. So the thing about H.R. McMaster really drives me insane because I remember there have been so many times that I've covered stories of like people in the media not knowing the difference between Hamas and Hezbollah, for example, mm-hmm. people in the media. There was a very famous moment. I'm not sure if Trump was the one he was doing an interview. I think it was with Dennis Prager or Hugh Hewitt, and he didn't know the difference. I think it was between Hamas and Hezbollah, but it may have been between Sunni and Shia. But there's like point is there's been at least like three or four different instances where somebody who talks about politics for a living or is a politician didn't know the difference between Hamas and Hezbollah or Sunni and Shia. And what you saw there with uh, McMaster is it's not that he doesn't know it. It's that he's lying because he does know. He does know. He does know that the Taliban and ISIS are enemies. He does know that it's ISIS who did the terror attack, but he's blaming the Taliban. Why? Connect the dots. He wants us to go back in. And so you go out there, you do the propaganda. CNN anchor is not going to push back because they don't know shit. They don't know anything. I know more than them, and I'm an idiot YouTuber. Are you kidding me? So look at this position that we're in. I guarantee you they're going to use this to attack Biden as if there's anything Biden could have done to stop it. When he already warned about it, we already secured the airport. We already evacuated almost 100,000 people. What else could possibly have been done? All this tells me is... They were already going probably as fast as they could. You were giving it 100%. Okay, give it 101%, and let's get out there even faster. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, the the real horrible lesson to take from this is that our servicemen and women are at um, in grave danger every moment that they remain in the country, and certainly if they remain past August 31. And so, you know, you had G, all the G7 trying to pressure Biden into staying longer, et cetera, et cetera. And to his credit, he stood firm because this dynamic is really obvious. You stay longer, you end up in the middle of a civil war where, you know, people keep saying, oh, well, we haven't lost any U.S. troops for the past year or the past two years. Yeah, that's because Trump had negotiated a peace deal. OK, so that's why there was not a threat to U.S. service members right then. But once you go past that deadline, it's a totally different situation. And that's something they don't want to talk about. And just final point, it's not just our people that are in danger. Given the facts of this situation, it's also every single Afghan civilian and the Taliban who were also targeted by ISIS. So, you know, they're not going to like the fact that I'm lumping all of them together. But it is an objective fact that they were all targets. All of them. But now it's going to be used again 
by the deep state, by the Pentagon, by the CIA, by the military industrial complex, by the media to say, oh, my God, probably the Taliban behind this. We should probably stay longer. Just yeah. total mess. Yeah. And you can also see, too, why all the presidents before Biden didn't have the stones to actually do this, because this is the ons media onslaught and they will just bury you. It's I not going to stop. Yeah. The deep state leaks. The stenography, journalism, all of it, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. They didn't give a shit about Afghanistan until they could use this moment to try to advocate to stay indefinitely. And so, yeah, they'll just crush you, and it's working. I mean, his approval rating has dropped precipitously. Even as Americans still overwhelmingly say this is the right policy— I've never but seen anything like it. They've been persuaded to believe, like, oh, we could have done the withdrawal differently. Really? I've, I've, been, I've really? never seen anything like this. 63% still say, to this day, get out of Afghanistan. A majority even say get out of Afghanistan if you tell them, what if al-Qaeda takes over? And if they say, what if the Taliban uh, takes over? No matter how you uh, phrase the question, Americans say, a majority, every time, get out of Afghanistan, but... I, again, I've never seen anything like it, this massive contradiction. Yeah. The same time people say get out of Afghanistan, they also are dropping Biden's approval rating on it from 55% all the way down to 25%, I saw in one poll. Oh, really? Yes, there was a 25% on the issue of Afghanistan. Oh, I on covered Afghanistan. it on my show. Yes. Okay. No, okay. no, no, not his not overall, overall rating. approval no, no, no. rating. On the issue of Afghanistan, it went from 55 to 25. It was his best, and now it's his worst. Yeah. And so that just shows you media propaganda works. It works. Yes, And, you know, we're, like I said on my show the other day, we're standing in front of a tsunami going, stop, stop. Yeah. It's like it, that, you know, we're doing everything we can, but we're just we don't have a big enough megaphone. Yeah, indeed. Um, it is an onslaught, the likes of which I don't know that I have ever seen.